You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Angelscapes with host Nancy Smith, your direct connection to finding your soul's power and wisdom. Join Nancy, Akashic Medium, in this interactive show to explore tools and steps you can take to create peace, calm, and confidence in your life. So now, please welcome the host of Angelscapes, Nancy Smith. And welcome. Hello, this is Angelscapes, and I am your host, Nancy Smith. Um, tonight, uh, I'm here to share with you the spiritual soul power journey that I'm on and that I've been taking. And I'd like to show you the path that you can take to access the power of your soul and how much you can actually change the world around you. Um, and I would like for you to realize that you can be the amazing being that's hidden beneath all of all of all of the stuff. And I'd like to invite you to plug into your soul's power to find out who you really are. So tonight, Um, What I want to talk to you about is what spiritual movement changed the history of America? There are a lot of movers and shakers throughout our history. Um, So what could have shaken up the spiritual feelings or or, or emancipated spirituality or really truly helped people to have freedom in their own um, spiritual relationship? with their soul and with however they perceive their makers. So um, tonight I'm going to talk to you about the history, a little bit of spiritualism and mediumship and how it opened up um, America and, and people's thinking around their own religion. And um, so what I wanted to start to talk to you about is this impossible situation that I found myself in. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a medium, um, Akashic medium, but I'm also a medium. And I, uh, in my work, I prove the continuity of life, uh, showing that spirit does go on after the change called death. It's a very important um, personal journey that I'm on. And I worked with a lot of people, gosh, oh, like around 20 years, and I've helped people to work through their grief or work through their understanding of what happens in the change called death, that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. But I want to talk to you about this impossible situation that I found myself in a number of years ago. Um, and there were there were two two trains running in this impossible situation. One, uh, one was um, the parents have lost a young child, very tragically, had no control over what happened. This was a little boy who was on a um, field trip with his school. He was with basically strangers, people that he kind of knew, and there was, I think, a vehicle accident or a bus accident. And this little guy passed much to his parents' horror and um, they had no connection. No, they, 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 by the time they got to him, he was gone. And the feelings of this family, they were devastated, absolutely devastated, and had a sense of how can this ever be made right in our lives? How can our faith in life be restored? How can we believe in the goodness of life? How could we ever feel safe again? This wasn't an only child, so how could they ever let their children go out into the world again if this happened to one of their young children and they decided to reach out to a medium that medium was me in an act of desperation as a last stand like a last act of faith there was nothing left except for connecting to talking to a medium now the other part the other train in this story was that as a medium I connect um, to spirit 
to bring through information, bring through details, and connect to a spirit that wants to communicate and have to bring that spirit to life. Um, and at that time, in my mediumship work, I had decided or I had really stepped out to take a risk. To, a, to I was a trained artist. I knew how to draw. And I wanted to ex, um, express my work, my mediumship work, through my drawing. So I wanted to draw faces of those that I was communicating with. And I, and I was, it's a lot of work. It was a lot of experimentation. And as spirit blended in with me as an artist... It was a whole different conversation that happened within me and within my understanding of how to draw. Some of my drawings were just awful when I first, when spirit blended with me, there was definitely um, another thought form coming through me and boy, did we fight. So when I first started to draw, I would see shadows on the paper. Faces would come out in terms of shadows and I would sketch in the shadows that I was seeing. And then as I developed a little further, I uh, started to um, visualize them clairvoyantly, seeing it in my mind's eye, and then sketch what I saw in my mind's eye. And then something happened where I wasn't seeing anything. I was just, I just heard, start drawing now. And I had no image that I was working from, and that really stressed me out. I had to trust spirit. I had to trust where my hand was going to go. And then when I, and I had to ask spirit, How big was the nose? How big is the head? Where do I put the ears? And it was a constant dialogue between me and spirit of how is this drawing going to to come together until I finally learned to allow my hand to just flow with the directions of spirit. And that's why I'm saying the drawings didn't look so great from the very, for for a while there, for for a few, few months. And I was horrified at this. And yet, um, the only way to do it is to do it. So the other piece in in connecting with a client, a sitter, I would call them who sat down in front of me, I know nothing about them. I know nothing about their background. I know nothing of who they want to talk to or what has happened to them. I can only look at their faces. Sometimes I can feel emotions or I could feel the, the um, grief. But for the most part, there's nothing in my mind. I'm completely a blank slate. So at this point, is sitting in front of these devastated parents who had no idea what what was going to happen who was going to come through what was on my mind is I am going to draw I'm going to bring through verbally what I'm feeling what I'm sensing and then I'm and I'm going to pick up my pencil and just let spirit work with me and this is an act of faith so here we have those people those devastated parents in front of me on their act of faith their last stand of how could we make sense out of losing our child. And then my act of faith of I'm going to draw. I want to have a visual image that will help these grieving people. So it was a blind action. Both of us were in blind action. So we had two impossible situations. And here they came together um, in this one very important meeting. So... As the parents kind of surrendered to say, cross their fingers and hope that they were going to come away uh, from talking to me as a medium with with a better sense of life. And here is my uh, need to surrender against all odds to the spirit talking through my hands, through my pencil. And as I started the reading, I felt the child, I felt this little boy, and I brought the information forward. I, I have a, I have a sense of this little boy here. He's, he's young. I feel like he's um, maybe middle school or a little bit younger. And I described him and they understood. It's a tragic passing. feels like, you know, that was sudden. And um, I described um, how he felt during those last moments of life, what the transition was like, which was a relief for them to hear. And then I started to draw. And the drawing was awkward. And I faltered. And I struggled, and the face was crooked, the eyes didn't match, and there were many, many errors in this drawing. And I said, oh, here we go again. And I wanted to apologize, but then I had this feeling of keep going, just keep going. And I kept drawing, and I kept drawing, and working the verbal words with the drawing. And soon, um, the mom started to recognize the boy. She said, that kind of looks like my son. And um, and as I looked at this crooked face with the eyes not matching, I wanted Again, to say, uh, this is not the greatest thing ever, but um, I sat there and let her look at it, and I let the father look at it, and I just kind of 
followed their eyes and kind of how are they taking this in? What is spirit talking to them through my drawing? And then I heard the question from the mom from deep within her heart where she said, was he alone when he passed? I am so afraid. This is my worst fear is that he was scared and alone and there was nobody there. And then I heard a little voice in my head uh, from spirit saying, cover half the face. So I covered half the face and there was a little boy's face. He goes, yes, that's really him. And then I heard cover the other half of the face. So I covered the other half of the face and she looked, mom looked at the drawing and tears welled up in her eyes. That's my father. That's exactly my father. He died a few years ago. And I said, now we have the answer. Your father was there with him at the time of his passing. He was never alone for one second. And that is the being that was your father that took him to the other side and he is okay. They're together. I couldn't have told her that even in all the words she saw it in the drawing. And that was the miracle. That was the impossible situation that spirit was able to communicate through my drawing to these parents, the impossible situation that became the miracle of communication from spirit through me, and I had no control over it. So um, when we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the impossible situation and how I was able to be in that situation based on the history of spiritualism. So we'll be right back. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. And welcome back. You're listening to Angelscapes with Dean Smith. And I want to give you a number to call in if you um, want to call in for a short reading. 866-451-1451. Again, it's 866-451-1451. And when I left off, I was talking to you about an impossible situation that that turned into a miracle of communication from spirit to tell a parent that not only their child was survived the change called death, but their child was not alone. And through my drawing, I was able to show them that the child wasn't alone. And I, and I fought that drawing. I couldn't, like, for the life of me, figure out what the heck was going on with the drawing until the parents looked at it and we both looked at it. Now, how does that happen? Now, I don't mean technically, but when I was doing this mediumship reading, there's a tremendous history that su- from that supported me to do this. I didn't. I haven't just made up mediumship. I didn't just come out on my own and say this is what I do, and and I'm the only one in the world doing it. No, of course not. There's a whole history behind 
me, that enabled me, that facilitated me to work with spirit and to give this message also enabled those parents to to trust, to go for that last desperate act of faith and see a medium. So where did that come from? What is the history of mediumship? What is that all about? So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because the history of mediumship in terms of spiritualism and even before spiritualism is huge. And it was it's a group of people over many, many generations that had the courage to trust their own beings, to trust their own spiritualities and come out with another understanding of, um, of life based on what they were being taught to believe. And this um, started the, the foundation, a, per, a, a very brilliant man um, started this movement. His name was Emanuel Swedenberg, and he lives from 1688 to 1772. He was a scientist, a theologist, and a Christian mystic. And he believed in Christianity, but he wanted to know the mystic end of it. He was also a seer. He was had many, many gifts from spirit. Um, he was from Stockholm, Sweden. And you can look for the Swedenberg Foundation um, if you want to read more about him. But what he said in all of his um, messages, the, what was so profound in his talk was... He said to to his people's followers, he said, we do not need to have a king or a queen or a priest in between us and a communication with God. We are gifted. We can have that communication between ourselves directly to source, directly to God, the Savior, whoever you believe it to be. And this, he said this just before the French Revolution and the American Revolution. And I feel like his words were like for, a foreshadowing or a forerunner of um, as peop- before these um, revolutions where the revolutions were of government and uh, personal freedom. I feel like he was saying something very important about spiritual freedom away from what others were telling people spirituality and connection to God was really about. And I remember those in those days in, in the in a few hundred years before that, um, Christianity had come on board. I'm not saying anything bad about Christianity, but some of the religions that held Christianity in their bucket were using hell, were using damnation, were using sin as a way to um, make people afraid of God, of the creator. And of course we know about going to hell and, and having needing um, forgiveness. Catholic church is about confession or in and, and the other Protestant um, Calvinistic puritanical religions, you need a forgiveness from the pastor and, and through years and years of suffering. And, and you're not, may not make it to heaven. You may just have to go to hell. And I think of those, those Bosch paintings from, I think it was the 1400s of, what hell looks like. So um, pretty scary, pretty awful stuff. So our faith, people's faith and people's relationships with God, with source, with the creator for hundreds and hundreds of years were held hostage by fear, by fear that was being fed by um, leaders in um, government, kingdomships, um, and religion, church and state were, were married together for many hundreds of years and, and wars were waged on it. So when, when did we have spiritual freedom, um, where we could have a relationship with, um, our soul, a relationship with the creator. Now there are many, um, communities or cultures, the native American culture, the Celtic culture that had the, um, the Celtic faiths, the Druids, um, and go anytime you in many other um, shamanistic faiths, um, the Peruvian, the the um, Andean faiths, Quechua people, um, the conquered people were usually conquered, and the religion was brought forward to them. So, so the Quechua people were conquered by the Incans, but the Incans took on the Quechua faith, which was very. Uh, earth and spirit based. There was nothing that came between them. It was how they lived their life and how they um, blended in with 
the creator is how they experience their lives. And so then when the Spaniards came over with the Benedictine monks um, and said, this is how you live your life so that you can be saved, saved. Um, it influenced the Quechua tradition, although many of them ran into the mountains and, um, and, and continued their connection to source and spirit. And, and they weren't as influenced as as the people in the towns were by the Spaniards. Um, in any event, where am I going with this? So we're going to the spiritualist movement. So here was Emanuel Swedenborg saying this very um, kind of futuristic thing. There does, there is no need for anybody to between, be between us and our spirituality. And I'm going to go forward and, and explain um, how the spiritualist tradition unfolded and how it changed America. So, so we'll be right back. You can read more about me or see my media, my spirit art on my webpage, angelscapes.net. Um, I have lots of pictures up there and some stories on, on how people reacted to the drawing. So take a look at that while we're on break, and we'll be right back. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. And welcome back. This is Angelscapes. I'm your host, Nancy Smith. We're, we are going to take calls, and we have a caller on the line. Um, and you can call in at 866-451-1451. And who's the caller, please? Hello? Hello, Nancy. This is Kimberly from Temple Heights. Hi, Kimberly. How are you? I'm wonderful. So good to, and how are you? Good. It's so good to hear from you. Oh, my gosh. We're at Temple Heights. Is where is a camp? Is a spiritualist camp where I, I spent a week up there with you guys, and um, it's yeah. pretty popular. It's a pretty lovely, beautiful, right on the coast of Maine camp. So how? So tell me what's going on, Kimberly. Um, well, I've relocated to Orlando, Florida. No way. No just way. For the, just for the winter. How much snowbird? Just now. Oh. <laughs> okay, just for the winter. Oh my gosh, you had me going. I thought, oh my God, you'll be here for the summer, right? So good for you. Right. Yes. Will you come back and join us again? I will. I gave you some dates. Oh, I please um, let me know when you want me. I'll be up there. Um, that was amazing. So at the spiritualist camp, just want to listen the listeners to say um, it's a beautiful time to go up there. You, ha you guys have you have lodging, but there's hotels nearby, and we have. Um, we have circles and we have seances. We have services, two services in a week, and we teach classes, right? So, so yeah. I would say, what's the website for that camp, Temple Heights? Um, just look up Temple Heights. I believe it's templehights207.org. 
Yeah, Seattle Seven Dot Org. And are you guys on Facebook too? Just if they look for Temple Heights, would they find you? Temple Heights Spiritualist Camp. It's about oh, Spiritualist camp. camp. Spiritual Camp. Okay, beautiful. So, what can I do for you today, Kimberly? I miss you oh, so much. I just wanted to join you and see if you had anything, any message from spirit for me and just say happy Thanksgiving and thank you for serving our camp. Oh my gosh. You're so welcome. Well, let me tune in to see what spirit has to say for you. Um, um, I, as I feel who's coming through, I feel like this is a very new nurturing person coming towards you. I'm, I'm making it fast. I could, um, I feel like it's feminine. It could be a grandmother. Less, but anyway, she's coming in. Her concern for you is, were you having trouble in physically, like in your joints or something? I feel like there was something. You feel so much better right now being in warmer weather. And um, I, I don't know if it was you or your husband, but does it does this make sense to you it's like your health is really slowly getting better how long have you been in florida just uh, i think a couple like not even a month yet right so about tell- about nine days about nine okay. days and i'm starting to feel like the tin mail who's just got a little bit of oil in his joints <laughs> well you're gonna feel better i feel like getting into the, the sun but i want to get you into the salt water as well i don't know if you're near the ocean or what's going on wh- where your location is but if you can get to some salt water you're going to feel the creeks in your joints really start to soften um and uh it feel better so take a little trip i don't know if you're if you, it's a little bit hour hour and a half ride staying you know stay where you got to stay but uh, be careful be safe you're um, i feel that you're really surrounded with a lot of healing right now, get a lot of green energy around you as well. So this loving, nurturing, and I feel like as a, I feel like it's more of grandmother. I want to go on, a, I don't know if I want to say mother's side, but um, she was a little bit your height, a little bit shorter. She had, she had darker hair that was going up gray, um, and she either cut it short or she wore it up. Um, and she also talks to me about hips and legs um, through in, in her older years. She had trouble walking around. Does this make do you? Do you understand this? Yes, I do. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, and so, what she's saying is, you kind of have a little bit about what she has. So she's glad you're taking care of yourself. But you have to come back um, in the summer to New England, and that's my message to you. <laughs> she's lo- she's loving you to pieces, and I also feel that once you get settled in. In, in that area, you'll you'll start to um, do your work. You 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 actually do have um, spirit is working to bring people to you so that you could do your work a little bit. So, but take your time, heal, put your feet up, relax before you Thank get you. back to work. But you have a calling, so uh, and Thank spirit you. is is letting you rest. Thank you so much for calling in. I hope we talk soon. Can you call in? I'm going to let you go so that you can help the mothers. And my husband, okay. John, says hello, too. Oh, give him a big hug for me. I'm so, thank you. I was so glad to to hear from him on uh, Facebook. So we'll talk soon. I, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait for summer, and I can't wait to see you up at the camp. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you again, Nancy. Have a wonderful and blessed holidays. Bye-bye. You, too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, that was awesome to hear from from Kimberly. She's also um, a um, at the spiritualist camp that we talked about. She uh, she's a spiritualist, and there just have been some tremendous um, history around these spiritualist camps all over the country. And I wanted to say what some of the stuff I'm going to talk about. There's a couple books um, I want to do a little bibliography: Other Powers, The Age of Suffrage, Spiritualism, and the Scandalous Victoria Woodhull by Barbara Goldsmith. Tremendous book. You get an audible and listen to it because it's huge um, about the history of spiritualism, but also the history of our country, the history of suffragists and suffragettes, suffragettes and abolitionist movement and some things that I, I learned some things that I didn't even know about. Another book is called The In-Betweens, The Spiritualist Mediums and Legends of Camp Etna, which is another camp in Maine by Mira Tack and Tassin, I'm saying that right. And um, the history of spiritualism, again, why would I say this is talking about the history of our country? So spiritualism came on board in the 1800s before the um, the uh, Civil War. And in that time, I remember I talked about the uh, um, Emanuel Swedenborg as being 
the beginning of the thinking of the oh, he creaked open this door that had been slammed shut hundreds of years earlier uh, and through mysticism through his gifts and then there's this other fellow Franz Anton Anton Mesmer 1734 to 1818 and he was German same thing was really very interested in more of the psychic stuff or the metaphysical stuff and he developed hypnosis um, he called it animal magnetism and he said that um that our we have blocks he's the one that brought the idea of blocks that come in um to um mis- emotional and physical that cause emotional blocks or emotional feelings where we can't go forward emotionally they cause physical disease he was the first one to talk about that way back in late 1700s so he announced um this animal magnetism and then he started up hypnotizing people or mesmerizing them is what what the word used to be, and and helping them to heal emotionally so they could heal physically. And his followers um, learned how to do this. Um, and uh, this mesmer, mesmerizing induced a hypnotic state, and it's very people are very suggestible at that time. And they also called them a um, hypnosis and trance states, their fundamental traits. Um, and these traits, in all honesty, uh, they go back um, in the time of the ancient sh- shamanic practitioners uh, would use these um, techniques, and without calling them hypnosis or mesmerizing, but the, the ancients, the ancient healers knew about the emotional blocks. They knew about, um, called psychopomp, they knew about healing from the traumatic state or healing from the human state. So um, here we were again, um, that door was squeaking open, back open after being slammed shut for several hundred years. And and um, Franz Anton Mesmer was helping to open the door along with Emanuel Swedenborg. And uh, then there was this another fellow, Andrew Jackson Davis. Um, he was born from 1826, passed in 1910. Another, um, he learned... He was mesmerized, he was hypnotized, and he um, went into a, a state of trance. Now, this is, he was born um, to poor parents. He never learned how to read or write. And from this trance state, wrote volumes of information, volumes of work. And he called his work The Principles of Nature, A Divine Revelation, and A Voice to Mankind. And he began to talk about people's spiritual natures and their connection with um with God, with Source. And he um, wrote another, um, there's a biography on him called The Magic Staff, and um, its sequel, Beyond the Valley. And he um, opened the door to modern spiritualism. He was not a spiritualist, but he opened the door and made a foundation for modern spiritualism. So if you want to read about three men who um, began to create a foundation for the spiritualist movement, those were the three guys that you could check out. So we're going to go on a break. And when I come back, I'm going to tell you the story of what triggered spiritualism, what triggered mediumship as a front and center change of life and what that meant. So we'll be back. This is Nancy and this is Angelscapes. And um, look me up while you're on break at angelscapes.net. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. 
Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veteran spoke-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBC. BBM Global Network. And welcome back. This is Angel Scapes. I'm your host, Nancy Smith, and I'm welcoming, welcoming callers in 866-451-1451. Again, it's 866-451-1451. And we have Ivy's here from Michigan. Welcome, Ivy. Thank you. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? I'm it's good. good to- I have a question for you. Go ahead. Um yeah, so I, you know that I've been in, in working in this field for a while and, and, and studying and teaching and learning and all the good things, but I seem to get major anxiety, particularly if it's somebody that I know and I just freeze and I can't seem to do my work. I wondered if you had any input for me on that. Oh, definitely. Um, so the first thing to say is... Um, you remember, I don't know if you heard the story about the impossible situation in the very beginning of the show, but it's about turning yourself over to spirit. So when, when you're starting to freeze and, and uh, or you just can't get past this gateway, um, there's a couple of things going on in sur- needing to surrender to spirit. So as we surrender to spirit, there sometimes can be um, some emotional places or some self-protection places that say, I don't think so. You know, I don't want you to go there. I have no idea where you're going. I don't trust this. So there's some um, personal work to do. Um, Remember, you're going to the edge of the world. You're going to the edge of consciousness. You're going to the edge of where our normal life is and and our spiritual life is, which doesn't feel so normal sometimes. So um, I would recommend some um, inner work. And, and and I, I love clearing, I love Reiki, I love all of the energy works, but there's some fears that you need to face that um, probably come from, and I feel like for you, I usually it's young between ages three and four, but I want to go with you at 10, 11, and 12. I feel like you may have had some experiences then with your own spirituality, with your own ability to see things beyond what is the normal and not sure what to do with them. So you can maybe squish them down a little bit. So working with a, a practitioner to help you to, to kind of go back in your timeline and find that place. You, you developed a very strong unconscious protector that sets up the fear flags when you are working yeah, with somebody yeah. when when you know you have to go there so i, I recognize i recommend doing that because i'm recognizing that within you and then the other piece is um i like to introduce here's something that i did that helped a lot my um inner um protector my inner person that that part of myself that um is really uncomfortable with doing mediumship work i remember sitting down in a meditation and i invited my unconscious self came out and complained to me we don't know you know you're you're dying along with you know you've died 12 (laughs) times today what are you doing i'm like no 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 so i introduced my guides that are helping me with my work to my inner protector so they could learn from each other and so I had an unconscious conversation. I wasn't totally aware of it, but I, I, I nurtured it along through meditation and prayer. And that helped me a, a tremendous amount. So, you know, I mean, Ivy, if you want to work with me a little bit, that would be awesome. I can I can okay. show you how to do those things. But I, I feel like you're very gifted. Um, and I'm really excited that you are teaching. As a matter of fact, I think that's great. Um, and I feel like your strength is, again, um, as you learn to face your fears and know, oh, these fears are, are not the monsters I thought they were. They're they're smaller. I feel that you have a tremendous amount of compassion within yourself that you can offer to other people as courage and strength. So I want to really encourage you 
for um, doing that work. And I also want you to focus on your sacral chakra. And um, I don't know if you do angel work, but Archangel Shamuel is about the um, the love of God, the presence of God, the um, the really working in the center of God. So with your um, solar plexus and Archangel Shamuel opening up for some healing, that may help you do this. So well, he just I'm a- came through this week for the first time for me. He's one of the really? archangels that doesn't usually come, and he just came the last couple of days. So I'll look into him more in the state wow. and reach out to you. I really appreciate that. Oh, you're so welcome. Isn't that a, a, a validation? Here I'm saying him, and he came through. I don't usually talk yeah. about him. Oh, um, great. So we'll talk later, I hope, and uh, and, and get you, you through Nancy. this. Thank you, Ivy. You're welcome. And uh, and I, Chris is on the line, too. Chris, are you still there? I am still here. Wonderful, Chris. How are you? I'm so, yeah, I'm good. Welcome. My gosh. I haven't, I haven't heard your voice in a while. So, no, so it what can, been a while. We haven't, we haven't talked in a long time. It's been too long, too long. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we're going to I'm gonna take a break, break in a couple seconds. So what? ask me your question while we're on break. I can mull it over. So what, what can I do you for know, you? You know, one of the biggest things here is, you know, you got all the anxiety of everything that's going on with um, that, that's out there. And one of the big things right now is just, you know, have, with the loss of, you know, not having people around for Thanksgiving just has caused a lot of, you know, distress and just trying yes. to get through this. You know, and, and, and yeah. that has been very difficult. I mean, all of a sudden you, you start out thinking, oh, we're going to have all the kids over, and now you're finding out, well, no, we're not going to do anything. You know, we're yes. going to have a meal by ourselves. That's a really good question. We're going to go on break, and I am going to really talk to my guides about that because I can rec- I really I resemble your question, so um, I'd like to have an answer to that too. So, Chris, hang in there. We're going on break, but we can when we come back. We're talking to Chris, and I'm going to see what the guides have to say about um, Thanksgiving. And um, I want to also clue you in. Um, you can read more about. Um, the work that I do, the spiritual work that I do on Divine Love Affair and Akashic Journey, you can find that. It's by Nancy Smith on Amazon.com. And there's some beautiful, beautiful exercises in there for getting out of your own way, clearing emotional blocks, and letting spirit come fully into your life. And uh, we'll be right back. This is Nancy, and this is Angelscapes, and we're on BoldBraveMedia.com radio. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. 
And welcome back. This is Angelscapes. I'm your host, Nancy Smith, and we are taking calls. We're also talking about um, the uh, powerful spirit that Americans have shown for for the whole inception of, of America. And um, and I, I would like for to talk about the spirit of that. So you, we are taking calls. It's 866-451-1451. 866-451-1451. We're with Chris. Chris, you asked an awesome question around um, here we are coming up to Thanksgiving. And yet you were talking about COVID. It's really kind of rearing itself up. And people are being told to stay home. And a lot of people are finding they have to stay home. Um, and right. can't be with family. Is that the question? I, I have to understand that clearly. Yeah, it, 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 it's that is the, the energy that swirls around that, that you feel, you know, there's that helplessness you feel because you can't do anything about it. You want to be with your family. You're, there's the anger because it's like, okay, well, this is not what I want to do. But, you know, you, you're left with this is what I have. So right. Like, I mean, and that, that, yeah. And now now here with Thanksgiving for many many people this is a time of pulling their family close to them. This is I mean you have huge dinners many families have huge dinners 25, 30, 40 people and or they or they um do um work volunteer work with um the homeless or many people. And so but now we're being right. asked to um kind of shut our doors and be singular. And uh, and I feel like we have I have a couple of strands that I'm feeling from spirit and I'm going to be saying stuff that I've been asking you know that I need to hear too first of all it's the truth of the matter um what is the truth around I mean we there's a virus we're having a pandemic people are very very sick and there's been a lot of opinions around whether this COVID thing is really real or if it's political or people making it up and it's torn us apart as a nation it's torn us apart as a people and um as other countries look in on the United States Canada and England going what's going on with this country we need to face the truth of it that we are actually in a pandemic and people are very very ill some of them are not um surviving the illness and some of them are just kicking its butt and doing really really well so what's the truth that we're we're working on and i feel like it's it's about um your inner power, your inner progress, and facing what's going on and loving yourself and loving your family from a place of truth. Um, I think a very loving act can be, we're going to stay home this year and we can, we have technology to work with. We have phones, we have so many gifts and to offer up the time, um, say it's Chris, it's just you and, and Susan at home and nobody else. I want you to make sure that you are sitting quietly together with yummy food and you're saying kind things to each other and you're either on Zoom or you're on the phone and you are one by one bringing or, or groups bringing your family together. I want you to remember the spirit of Thanksgiving, which is gratitude and um, and acknowledging that you're here. Um, and you're you're very blessed, and and that doesn't have to look like a certain thing. That's an attitude from in your heart. That's creativity. That's that's um, accepting your life as it is, and being grateful to God or Source, however you see that, for um, what you have in your life. So that's the tr- the other truth of it is um, you are able to, what I feel like for you and Susan is do something creative, create something, make something that is commemorative of your love for each other and your love for your family. It could be do, you know, do a painting or, do, or make up some food or, or um, whatever your strengths are. I, I think Chris, you're very handy with tools and stuff or maybe, um, do some woodworking or things like that. And Susan um, is also very talented. So create something together on the day, on Thanksgiving Day. And um, and, and work, go softly. Go softly. Your inner power in, in, it is, is being funded through the quietness, um, through the challenge. And you, um, you're, you're, you're being tempted 
to see the failure of Thanksgiving or the loss, but instead I want you to see the gain, that you are wiser than you were before. We have learned so much with this crazy pandemic. And um, the secret of your success, the secret of your joy, is in and being is about being consistent in your positive thinking, consistent in loving your family, loving yourselves, and being grateful for life no matter what. Remember um, when the... This the story or the mythology around Thanksgiving is there are a bunch of hungry, hungry Puritans, and the and the, the who were not making smart decisions, and it was the Native Americans that came forward and said, "How about this? Learn this. Try this. Remember that 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 kind of lesson. We forget that basic lesson where we started with nothing, and with the help of others, we had enough to eat. Summer's going to be a better time." for us um so maybe you do a little celebration a little hopeful thing and get some flowers and bring them into the house so you can remind yourself that this is a season and this too shall pass so hopefully this was helpful to you chris did and i said something encouraging to those guys out there there are other possibilities that we just haven't realized when we're stuck in the loss of it. But when we're going to the creativity of how am I going to do this, there are many adjacent possibilities such as technology or wait the season out. Chris, does that answer your question? Is it helpful? Well, I hope so. I don't hear. Hold on. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Everything good. Is it helpful? Yes. Oh, no, it was very helpful. Very helpful. It's always good to reflect upon get somebody else's opinion about it. Because, if, you know, when you're sitting there and you're you're thinking about it in your own head, it's always, you, 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 it gets very distracting. But it's good to hear somebody yeah. else's opinion. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. So get that creative project going for Thursday. A, a creative product that shows your gratitude. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that's a perfect question for today. Thank you so much. So we're gonna go on You're a break welcome. and uh, oh yeah, and I hope to talk to you later. You and Susan, I, I miss you guys. Um, so we're gonna All go right. on a break and um, we'll be back shortly. Take care, Chris. Thank you. Very, thank you very much. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. And welcome back. This is Angelscapes. I'm your host, Nancy Smith, and we're coming down to the winding down to the end of the show. And where did the time go? And I had some wonderful callers, and I'm really excited. And just started to lay the foundation um, for for everyone to really take a look at um, 
how spiritualism can open the door for mediumship and how mediumship opened the door for us to to really um, have an experience that we are spiritual beings having a human experience and that some of the things that have been always assumed to be correct may not be exactly the right thing. We There is no hell. We go when we pass. We we go to heaven, and um, that this um, spiritualism opened up a time when there was uh, great poverty and there was there was great uh, religious um, weights on everyone's head, and the message to spiritualism was joy, was was connection and a personal relationship to God, with nothing in between. So. You can um, find me on on uh, angelscapes.net. You can also find me on Facebook, Nancy of Angelscapes. And I also want to say, look for Soul Power Healing, uh, Soul Power Living, um, how to tools for building a life that you want and love. And also, um, what else can I tell you? My book, Divine Love Affair and Akashic Journey. And if you write to me, Nancy, at Angelscapes and say you heard me on the show, I'll send you a link to do a 15-minute consult. I can talk to you more about what I do with the Akashic Records, with with mediumship, and um, how to open up your soul and your spirit to um, a, a wonderful uh, empowered place so let's see this these rec- shows are recorded and you can find them on iHeartRadio boldbravemedia.com under angelscapes or tuesday night channel um, or, um under tuesday night channel 100 or um just look at the podcast iHeartRadio that's probably the best way to to go about this and um, I want you to encourage you in this season to relax be grateful and in your gratitude find the things that nurture you and support you and embrace them and allow yourself to to be creative in your in your thinking in your living this is a time of change and shift it's not the end it's the beginning of some really cool stuff so um, let's connect to your soul let's use this as a time to be powerful in your own spiritual awareness and for now I bid you discover your soul find your power and live a joyful and fulfilled life because that's what we are created to do that's what we're meant to do and have a wonderful holiday season and I'll see you in the next show good night This has been Angelscapes with host Nancy Smith. Tune in each week as Nancy discusses ideas, tips, and lessons to help you open to receive divine love, joy, and soul power in your life. You can discover the powerful being you really are right here on Nancy Smith's Angelscapes. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company